Hello everyone and welcome to the Distinct Mastering YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about the Ableton Spectrum Analyzer. This was a special request from one of my mastering clients, so let's get right into it. Okay, I've created an Ableton session for today's video and we're going to be talking about the Ableton Spectrum Analyzer. One of my clients is having a lot of low-end issues with his mixes. A lot of his mixes that he's sending to me for mastering are coming in very heavily boosted on the low end. Personally, I think he has a room problem, and that is why he has such low-end rumble in his mixes, and it just trails off when I look at it on a spectrum analyzer off through the highs. Now, I, I've told him to use a spectrum analyzer, but he doesn't quite know how to use it. Hence, we're going to be talking about the Ableton Spectrum Analyzer today. Here at the bottom left is the Spectrum Analyzer, and it's pretty simple to use. I've got some pink noise running. That's why you see this graph. And this is showing us the frequency representation of the pink noise. If you're curious to know what the pink noise sounds like, this is what it sounds like. Spectrum analyzers can be a tricky subject. There is a function on spectrum analyzers, not the Ableton one, called slope or tilt, which can adjust how the spectrum analyzer looks. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because the Ableton spectrum analyzer operates at a slope of zero. And that is why it always looks like it trails downward. When I use the Ableton Spectrum Analyzer, to me it always looked like the low end was heavily loaded. Now I wanna show you the difference between say, Voxango Span, which is a free Spectrum Analyzer that you can get and I highly recommend it. I'll leave you a link in my description. This free version, notice the slope is completely opposite. And that is because if I go into the settings here, there's a slope knob. And as I change this, you will see that is it altering the look of the spectrum analyzer. If I put it to a value of zero, now it looks like the Ableton spectrum analyzer. But at default, the slope is at 4.5 on this. Now the slope that mimics pink noise is going to be three. And that is going to be a flat response with the pink noise as you see. But that is not how the human ear reacts to sound. The human ear reacts to sound more on a gradual slope that looks more like that, the zero. That is why the Ableton works at zero, but other spectrum analyzers give you the control. So we're not here to talk about Voxango Span today. We're here to talk about the Ableton, but I do wanna point that out because it's very important you understand why the Ableton slope is shaped the way it is so you don't get fooled. Okay, now I've muted the pink noise and we're gonna get into the controls of the Ableton Spectrum Analyzer. First of all, at the top, you have the on and off switch. Next, you have this arrow, which will expand the Spectrum Analyzer into the main window, which is very handy if you're trying to pinpoint specific frequencies or you want a bigger view. And as you can see, the Spectrum Analyzer has a vertical axis and a horizontal axis. The vertical axis represents the decibel value or the volume, and the horizontal axis represents, in this view, the frequency spectrum. That can also be changed, and I'll get into that in a second. The block value represents the number of samples that will be analyzed in each measurement. The higher you go, the more CPU you're going to be using, so pay attention to that. Typically what I like to do is put a spectrum analyzer on the master bus, and when I wanna look at individual problems or individual tracks, I will solo that track. But if you do start putting multiple instances of the spectrum analyzer on individual tracks, be aware that this block feature can take up some CPU usage the higher you go. The next one is the channel selection switch, so you have the options to go left plus right, or left or right, so that will just change the the you know what you're listening to whether you're listening to the left channel the right channel or both the refresh rate will determine how often the spectrum analyzer will refresh so the higher you go the more cpu you're going to use once again refresh and block are the two controls that will control how much cpu usage you actually are using so if i am playing this john summit song you can see the spectrum analyzer is running and if i go to a higher block setting it looks you know, more detailed. If I change the refresh rate, you see that it froze for a second there as I'm changing that value. And this is going to be very fast. This is going to be slower. So it gets a little more, you know, blocky. Now, once again, if I just pick the left channel, I'm looking at the left channel. If I pick the right channel, I'm looking at the right channel. 
And if I pick both, I'm looking at the combination of both of them on the frequency spectrum. Now the average slider allows you to specify how many blocks of samples will be averaged for each update of the display. So if I go to a low number, it looks like this. It looks very, very dramatic. It's always changing. As I increase this value, it's gonna start smoothing out. And this might be a little easier for you to understand when you are trying to craft mixes and understand what's going on. Notice how we hit a little breakdown right there and then the bass just dropped out. Let's play that over again. See, there's no bass there, and boom, the bass comes back in. So play around with the average button if you're looking to try to, you know, really see the overall, the overall spectrum of a mix. Think of it almost like the difference between a peak spectrum analyzer and then moving it to eight, like more of an RMS spectrum analyzer. And when I mean RMS, I mean root mean square. And if you're not familiar with that term, I'm not going to get into the specifics of it now but it's an average value versus a peak value. So if you know what meters look like and you know the difference between a peak program meter or PPM versus an RMS meter, then you understand what I meant with that. If you have any further questions on that, drop me a comment and I'll try to explain it in further. The next thing you have is a graph button here. So from this, you can change it to line, which is going to be a line representation of the spectrum analyzer, or bins, which is going to show individual bins for each frequency spectrum. And another thing that I didn't mention but you can do is roll over the graph and see what frequency you're looking at or what note you're looking at or what decibel you're at. So it's very handy if you do want to expand this. You can do that this way too. It's not as useful and practical to be trying to pinpoint specific problems when you're this zoomed in. You can also zoom in here, the dynamic range, which is also gonna talk about when I get down to this scale value here, this dynamic range. But let me finish back and go, this max button is going to turn on and off the, the maximum amount. See how it has superimposed this line at the top? That's the max amount for each frequency. Let me open this back up. So if I turn off the max amount, you don't get that anymore. Then you have the scale button. So right now we're on logarithmic. You have linear, which you see changes the scale type. So now this is really good for looking at the high end. Going back to logarithmic, I am looking at an overall logarithmic value of the scale. And then the semitones is the same. It just changes the graph. Now I'm looking at semitones instead of frequencies. And then down below at the bottom, you see this blue auto button. It's automatically sizing the dynamic range and the scale of the graph. If I turn this off, I can get independent control of this graph. And as you can see, this will control the upper limit. So if I change this, I am, you see the graph on the top here changing. And then as I go down, you're seeing the lower limit. So it's getting smaller. And you can also click and drag here Left and right will get you zoomed in and out, and then up or down will move the graph. So if you wanted to hone in on specific frequencies or get really dialed in and look at how things are moving, then you can do that. And let's smooth this out a little bit. I'm gonna go all the way to eight. So now, as I said in the beginning of the video, I didn't wanna play this John Summit song to get a copyright strike. So I'm gonna go ahead and mute this. Let's get some audio going. I'm gonna go ahead and play this serum, which is just a, sine wave and as you can see on the spectrum analyzer we're getting one pure tone right here and that is really what the spectrum analyzer is really good for another thing that you can do is you know let's say that there is some low end issues i'm going to turn on this sub oscillator now let's pretend I've got an instrument. This sine wave is an instrument. And you see, you know, the, the sine wave, I'm using the sine wave as a practical example because it's easy to understand. But if I, let's say that, that there's this low end rumble, I've got this sub going directly out now. This is a sub sound. If I turn off the oscillator, this is just a low tone right underneath that sine wave, two octaves below. Now I have another peak here. And so that might be a problematic frequency that you may or may not be able to hear in your monitoring. Okay, so what are the ways that you can use a spectrum analyzer to help you in your mix? Number one, reveal problems that you might not find in instruments, whether that be low end rumble or resonating frequencies. A spectrum analyzer can help you determine that even if you can't hear it. 
I do not recommend that you use a spectrum analyzer to replace your ears. You should use it as a visual tool to help aid. Be mindful that if you're paying too much attention visually to the spectrum analyzer, your brain is automatically gonna be focusing on the visuals and not listening. So you need to remember that you need to listen. Another thing that you could use a spectrum analyzer for when it comes to finding problematic frequencies is overpronounced high end. Maybe you've got some really serious high end issues that you need to roll off. So a spectrum analyzer can help give you some visuals. So the second thing you can use a spectrum analyzer for is poor room acoustics. Maybe you've got some low-end buildup or standing waves in your room that are causing some problems, just like I was telling you about my client. You can actually see visually on the Spectrum Analyzer if you've got this low-end buildup on your whole mix. Once again, let me play this John Summit track, or actually, I'll go ahead and play my track, but it's not out yet, and I can't actually play this song because it's a remix that we did for someone. So I'm just going to... Uh, I can't turn the volume down there. Let me turn the master down and get that down for you so you can actually see this on the graph. But, you know, visually, like I said, remember the spectrum analyzer is going to slope down. But what this is telling me is I've got a relatively balanced mix here. Okay, what I want to do now is I went ahead and put on an EQ onto my mix. And I don't want to play this because we just got contracted to do this remix and the song is not out. So I can't play it for you, I apologize. So I've turned the master down, but I slapped an EQ and I did a bass boost at 325 hertz, 8.1 dB. Now looking at the spectrum analyzer, you can see that there's just this huge bass boost. If I turn this off and look back, you're gonna see the mix balances out a little bit more. Now this is where I feel the Ableton spectrum analyzer kind of fools me. I'm not the biggest fan of looking at the spectrum analyzer with a huge bass boost because as you can see, when I turn this back on, I don't really see much of a difference, but take a look at this spectrum analyzer. Let me look at Voxango or also another free spectrum analyzer that I really like is this one by SIR tools. And you can see right now I'm in a breakdown. I apologize. Let me get over here and loop this section. So you can see here that according to these two meters, I have this huge bass boost, which is the same problem that my client was having. Now, I artificially recreated that because that didn't exist in my mix. But looking at the Ableton Spectrum Analyzer, it, it still shows the big bass boost, not as big as this one. And I like to use the one quarter octave RMS smooth because it smooths out the the graph for me. And, and that's what really helps me visualize what's going on. As you can see here, it's the slope, if I put it back to zero on this one, you're going to see that the boost, the base boost is out of control. The Ableton one does not show that as well as the others. Let's turn this back down and now it's reacting more. So yes, it's visually there. It does look like it, but let's smooth that back out. Let's turn that, let's smooth that average back out. And now I'm looking at these, these two spectrum analyzers just look better to me for purposes of mixing. That's just me. Now, a lot of people use the Ableton one. I'm not knocking it. Let me turn this back off. And as you can see now, we're a little bit more flat. This one needs to go back to the normal. This one looks more like the Ableton one, the Voxango Span. You can see this heavy bass boost. But that's not what's truly happening here. There is a little bit of a boost. So putting this back, this slope back to 4.5, we're getting more of a similar characteristic of this graph. And this isn't a mastered song, so it's just a mix down. And the Ableton one still has the gradual slope down. So I wanted to point this out because it is an important function of the Ableton one to understand that that slope value is always at zero. And you might be looking at it and thinking, I have this big bass boost, but you don't. So you need to use your ears and pay attention to that. Let me go ahead and turn on this John Summit song again so you can see. Obviously, he has a little bit of a bass boost. Really, the goal for what you're trying to do with a spectrum analyzer, you can't be completely flat. There's just That's just not standard. But you also, you know, 
you want to be as close to flat as possible, maybe more of a smiley face with on the two ends. That's how humans prefer to listen to music. But the Ableton one doesn't give you that. So when you're referencing with the Ableton one, understand that you're going to have a gradual slope down. But you want it to have you want to have frequencies represented in all of the spectrum. And what you can do is try to understand where the problems may lie by using the Ableton spectrum. So if you have a huge bass boost, once again, I'm going to take this same EQ and put it on this. Oh, I already have an EQ. So let's just boost this up. Now you see the Ableton one did get bigger. And now it looks like we've got a lot bigger of a gap between the peak of the low end here all the way down to these highs. If I turn that off, let's see what happens. I find the Ableton one is also hard to use because you can't open it up in a separate window, and I just don't like that personally. Um, if there's a way to do that and I don't know, please drop me a comment down below. I'm mistaken, possibly. But, the, you know, you can open it up bigger, but I always have to go back to that master. So the way to accomplish that would be to then... And mind you, the Ableton EQ has a spectrum. So if I turn that back on, you're going to see the spectrum right there. But as you can see, boom, if I put it on the track, which it can be handy, that's the way to use it, is putting the Ableton spectrum on the track and then looking at the graph on what, with what you're trying to do. So if you're working with your master... Put it on your master. If you're using it in an individual track by track level, you could put on the master and solo the tracks, or you could just put on the track and then remove it when you're done. But visually, you know, if I turn this off now, you can see it fall. Boom. And that was where we were before. So this is what you're looking for. You're looking for those types of problems. Once again, if you want a different meter or you want me to talk about the Voxango Span or the SIR Tool Spectrum Analyzer, drop me a comment down below. Both of these are free options too. I prefer to use them for different things. They have a lot more features than the Ableton Spectrum Analyzer. That is an overview of the Ableton Spectrum Analyzer and an overview of Spectrum Analyzers in general. If you enjoyed this video, please do hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit the bell notification so you can stay up to date with future videos. If you have any further questions about Spectrum Analyzers, drop me a comment down below and I'll be sure to answer your questions. Have a great day.